Hi, this is David. As I've been learning to code in R, I've discovered a really cool data platform called Quandl, and I wanted to show you just how easy it is to retrieve data into R from the Quandl data platform. The site is located at www.quandl.com, and it's free to retrieve data. If you want to make more than perform more than 50 calls per day, that's quite a few really, then all you need to do is register for free. So here's my profile, and you'll be assigned an API authorization key or token. So that's a long string value that's linked to your account. And that will allow you to make uh, perform more than 50 calls per day. The Quandl data platform has a lots of different data, not just financial data, but um, demographic data, economic data from various sources, and you can search or browse. So just to make this show you how simple this is, I just searched for Apple. And then for each data source, there is a Quandl code. So that's really all we need. The Quandl code is usually a code forward slash another code. And in this case, for Apple, it's G-O-O-G forward slash. And that's Goog for to indicate that first string indicates the database source. So this is pulling from Google Finance. And then there's another code to specifically identify this as Apple, the stock. So you can see it's got the ticker in there. Then the other source I went just for fun. Went, I went to, looked up some oil prices and has quite a few different um, speci specific variations on oil prices. But I just retrieved here the OPEC reference basket price. And again, you can see we've got a source. The source is the OPEC database forward slash ORB. Presumably that stands for OPEC, OPEC uh, reference basket. And so all I need for the data source is the Quandl code. If I have that, then I'll just show you how easy that is to get that from R. I mean, I'm here in R Studio. It's usually, um, it's usually the um, environment that I work out of. We do need to install the Quandl package. So that's the, the typical function there, install packages. Quandl, that's a free package, of course. And then I'm going to tell it here that I'm going to tell or set the Quandl token. And again, I don't need to do this if I'm just making a few calls, but this will allow me more than 50 per day. And that's a function here, Quandl dot auth, short, short for uh, authorization. And then I put that string in here that's under my uh, account profile. Okay, I've installed the Quandl package, so I do need to load that library into memory. And then I'm also just going, just so I could show you the plot, I'm going to load the uh, ggplot2. That's one of the three graphic systems in R. So those are the only two libraries I need in this case. And so the point here, I just want to show how easy it is to retrieve the data from uh, Quandl. Now that we've done the two things we needed to do, which is get our authorization token, and then also identify the codes so Quandl knows which data we're looking for. And so you can see now I'm going to get the Apple stock prices here. So that's a variable that I'm going to assign that variable or data frame with the Quandl function. So that's the key function. It's Quandl. And then it's got several arguments like any of our R functions. So here's a screenshot of the arguments potentially that are in the Quandl function. It's quite a few. We've got the code that's going to tell us specifically the data source we want. And then we've got a lot of different variations, including the start date and the end date of our time series. So that looks like that's going to be fairly typical. And then some other variations that I'm not going to go into now. Um, I haven't used them all. But here, so we've got again, stock Apple, uh, Apple is the variable. I'm calling the Quandl function. And so here I've indicated the code. You recall that's the code that we looked up. So it's the Google database. And I'm going to get the price information for the stock Apple with ticker AAPL. Now that happens to call in, that happens to, if I just left it right there, that would be a data frame with five columns because we get several pieces of information open uh, in, in addition to the date and the close. Um, but in this case, I'm going to specify a start date of 2010, January 1st, 2010. So that was one of the arguments in the Quandl function. And so I could just run it right there, uh, stop right there, and then I would get a data frame in five or six variables. But 
what I want to do is subset that. So this is an R function here telling me I want all of those rows, but I only want the two columns, date and close, right? So if I just run this right here, I'll show you, and then take a quick look at that variable that I just created and called the quandle function, you'll see that data was uh, pulled into R for me. And in this case, it happens to be in reverse chronological going up to um, September 26th, um, 2014 with the price close on Apple and then in reverse cron. But it looks like I've got all that data loaded into a data frame there for me by virtue of this call. So I think that's really smooth and cool really. And then just uh, to add one more in there, I'll assign to the variable oil and I'll do another quandle function call. This time I'm going to use the other quandle code that I looked up, the OPEC database, and then the oil reference basket. I specify a start date so I don't go back too far. And I could just uh, leave it at that. And in fact, um, in this case, I only get the two columns, so I don't need to, need to do any subsetting. And I just wanted to note here that I also could have used this, could use this function here, which is to say one of the arguments in the quando function is to just directly include the authorization code. So you see it's the same code there. And I could have also, I could also put it in the, on the function call. So I call that to, um, that's going to give me my oil prices and create another data frame called oil, but in this case with two variables. And then I'm just going to use an R function to merge those two where they share the date in common into a single data frame called merge data. And see, I'll just take a quick look at that, see how um, easy that is. And the merge actually sorts this, looks like by default sorts this, starting at my first date here, uh, it's 2010, um, looks like first trading day after January 1st. So you can see I've got the date, I've got the uh, close, uh, for the, it looks like that's the uh, Apple stock and the value um, of the oil oil price, and really that's all, all I really wanted just to show this example. I also was playing around with pulling in Bitcoin data because they've got that Bitcoin prices as a source. But now that I've got my data frame with the two, I'm just going to execute a ggplot that um, plots those two series on on the same chart. And then I'll just show that to you right here. And you can see I specified here the uh, close, the price close in red, that's the Apple stock. And then in black, I indicated the uh, oil price. So just wanted to show how really uh, smooth I think Quandle is and how easy that is. And I'm really excited about all the data sources that are in there. Thank you.